a good weekend for you so far? Busy week? Mm -hmm. Busy weekend for you so far? Yeah, very busy. Been very busy. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of uh, astonished at that. Yeah. Never been there. I haven't seen before. I've never talked about race. <laughs> <laughs> and so I don't know what kind of turnout that would be, but I'm not looking too long. <laughs>
it was a feeling when I finished that to Future 3 that that trip was done. <laughs> you know, that, that, it left open. It was huh? left open. It was uh, well, I, you know, yeah, it, it certainly could open up again. But it was a feeling of completion. You know, there were one, two, three uh, sequels that kind of felt like we had a whole story. But, um, Not when you have kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it could happen. You know, Michael J. Fox um, had a kind of curtailed his career for a while because of the Parkinson's um, problem he had. But he's come back out again. He's doing a new series, I mean, which is fabulous that he's, he's working very for it. So anything can happen. Anything can happen. Um, Jim Eating Kowski was one of my favorite characters that you ever played. Um, and I'm wondering if you could re uh, resurrect Jim Eating Kowski and tell us something profound. <laughs> well, the problem is I don't have liars. <laughs> I don't have liars. Yeah, it's in his house and you know, we uh, saw things in a different way. Um, <laughs> perhaps he threw away. He was a piece of sword there. But when we were doing taxes in the series, we had uh, breaks, you know, Christmas vacation, two or three months uh, after the breaks, six months, and I'd come back sometimes. I would, I would have a problem finding to in the house to again. I would climb the flowering rehearsal, trying to find <coughs> it. And uh, out of the blue, I, I had a brother who's deceased. He was probably two years older than I. And suddenly, my, my image of my brother Brother's face came to me. My brother's face was always clear. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, I, I would think of my older brother and think of uh, Jim would come back. And my brother would smoke, would drink, would do anything of that sort. So I'm not sure what the connection was. But what <laughs> about that? Uh, I, uh, I, I don't have any special words, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
advice that your characters have and why? Uh, any one of the characters? Series. 
So the, the, at the time, we were filming that series at the same time. But they ran over in some way because it was just a sense that I had to have that. So uh, it was kind of sad you know, to, for Eric Stoltz and for all of us uh, to, to see the go, but that sure is. And I could have another question. Do you think you could give us a great spot? <laughs> what? Could you say great spot for us? I could. <laughs> <laughs> great spot! <laughs> you know, I, I just found out uh, about a month ago, I was with some friends, and the question came up, where did the expression great spot come from? And I was told that in the Civil War, maybe it was the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, there was a general uh, by the name of something Scott, and he was a man of over 300 pounds. That he couldn't even get up, stay on a horse. He couldn't even have a little horse because he was too heavy. And he was great in dimension. So somehow people would talk about Scott would be great Scott. And hence it's come down to us. <laughs> great Scott. And we would practice 
rehearse with the model, using the model of our, in, in our hands. And, and we had a panelist there, so a kind of dancer who taught us what muscles we would use and a holding them this way, a holding them that way. So that when we would get rid of the, 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 the model and shoot, we can act as, you know, what would we like to handle that way and the size of it and all of that. To, to, so we would move our bodies in a way that looked like we were holding something, when actually when we were trying to shot it, we weren't holding it, it was just air. You know? so, and that took a lot of practice, it took a lot of work uh, to make it look like we, we were really dealing with these kinds of things. As a little fester, the Mamushka. Yeah. <laughs> how long or how many takes did that take? That took a lot of takes. <laughs> did you still practice this dance? Yeah, there was, there was the sword swallowing, the throwing the swords. And I think I got. Did I. Wasn't there a time when uh, 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 my brother. Nails me the wall upside down. That was not fun. <laughs> they set it up. But that was some of the time in the film when I had to hang by my feet upside down. Hanging upside down is not fun. Um, um, it doesn't make you feel well. <laughs> it's not nice. It looked, uh, and then we had a lot of steps and there was a coil. Had a choreographed and, and all that, so that was a lot of work. That, that took a lot of work, but it was also a lot of fun. Thank you. Well. All right. Um, I just have a question regarding the movie Back to the Future. Huh? Um, your a question regarding uh, the movie Back to the Future. Um, I understand that it was going two and a half decades ago. I know the company is coming two years from now. Um, I just like to know after filming the movie Back to the Future, does it feel like, uh, uh, let's say, you're going uh, towards the future? <laughs> what? I'm not quite sure what you would ask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I just want to. I'm sorry, I don't know. Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> Help me hear better. <laughs> Answer your question. Uh, mm -hmm. How did that go? Yes, uh, just for very good. I know 2015 is coming two years away from now. Does it feel like you're approaching 2015 after um, making Back to the Future? Well, I guess we are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't feel that the kind of scientific advances. The film will not going to happen in a couple of years. It just doesn't seem like it. No. Uh, there's not going to be any color wars yet. <laughs> um, and there's not going to be uh, some major space travel. There are sneakers that were developed at some time. Those came out of the market a couple of years ago. Um, but uh, yeah, that's not going to be for like being a movie. Right there, 
so tempted. I was so tempted. You know, because I thought I could do it. I thought I was ready to leave. Being on the floor of a 
was more sweet because he had a lot of hair. <laughs> and he was a little bit zaggy. Um, Einstein would do things that you wouldn't expect somebody of his brilliance to do. Uh, I, I read a story where he was uh, coming to the United States from Europe on a ship. And uh, he was, of course, in the first class accommodation on the ship. And he disappeared. Nobody could find him. And eventually he went down, you know, uh, where low paid passengers uh, lived on the ship, you know, kind of below the water that they were working on. And they found him playing with a poop ball machine. It was just, he, and, and that's kind of Doc Brown. You know, Doc Brown would find something like that and be wondering how it works, what makes the noise, how could he improve it, you know, was, and also Einstein, if anybody was very inventive. Time travel, he would have been the one in his day. Um, and I also, Dr. Brown was, was racing all the time, he was discovering new things. He had a passion for it. You know, all the stuff that he did with the clocks in the beginning, all the mechanical dog feet, um, that contraption you know, <laughs> to, to, to read thoughts. I mean, he was always passionate about discovering something new. He had an endless curiosity, and it sort of him. And I, read, I, I, I did read a lot of stories about scientists, how they would be that way, right? that they had, a, they had to discover how this was done, how that was done. And sometimes it would work all, you know, work all that and, then they'd say, the hell with it, they'd forget about it. And, they, and some scientists uh, 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 was getting on the bus, because he's getting on the bus. He suddenly figured it all out, right? And I just thought, that was a wonderful thing about Dr. Brown, which I really enjoyed. Hey, Dr. Brown. Hey, Dr. Brown. Play 
all three of the actor teachers it's successful in the same manner. And it started out at 8 o'clock and ended um, at 8 o'clock in the morning or something. And they asked I would be a surprise guest and have a QA. So I went and uh, it was a lot of fun. And this child, <laughs> uh, seven eight years old, raised his hand and asked a question. So I gave him a mic and he, he asked me, Mr. Roy, how does it feel not having to wear old ladies' makeup anymore? <laughs> Yeah, but then we bought it and we watched it a hundred times. But if you had any hand in it, 
sure I knew they got together. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know how that relationship worked. Um, there was uh, the Adams family who grew up watching that. You were the crazy homeless guy in Dennis to the Dennis. Hilarious. <laughs> Thank you. 